Hey everybody, um, it's me, Troy, from Crazy Movies, um, today we're doing something a little bit different, um, I'm going to review a bunch of games in one, rather than, uh, just one game at a time, and, uh, I'm trying something new, so, I uh, hope you guys like it, and if you don't, all right, I'll make something different. Anyway, let's uh, get on with the show. First game I'm going to review today is The Force Unleashed for DS. <coughs> Sorry about that. Guys, a little coffee today. <laughs> da ding, da ding, da ding, da ding, da ding. Um, well, I love that sound. Uh, the Force Unleashed for DS was a game that I really just think couldn't, I thought at least couldn't work on the DS, but it, it really pulled through and did. Like, how could like, a Star Wars game like work on the DS? And then I forgot, oh, the DS has really good polygon rendering abilities. And you know, it might not look good on the camera because I didn't really zoom into the top screen or anything. Um, but it actually looks pretty good when you look at it through like your own eyes. Or through an emulator. But that's a DS emulator laying around. Um, <coughs> so there are, the touch screen is your tap like to do actions, which I mean, I guess that's kind of what you would do for like normal like DS games of that era like the touch screen like you wanted to utilize it it wasn't like a game and watch multi-screen like <coughs> a Wii U type of screen it wasn't really used a lot so <coughs> they were kind of like trying to use this a lot in this game um, the buttons actually are like a d-pad and you can see they're kind of like a line like a d-pad but I wouldn't, like, sort of like the N64 controller where, like, they have the D-pad for the C-stick. Anyway, the D-pad or the buttons, they don't really work well with this game. So I'm glad that the 3DS and 2DS included an analog stick because this game works beautifully with the analog stick. If you tap the touch screen, you can, <coughs> you can, uh, jump, slash, do a jumping slash, which is jumping and slashing in quick succession. You can use your force to crush objects. You can use them to lift objects. You can use it to shoot lightning. And there's also a macro button, which allows for both lifting objects and shooting lightning, which I don't really know why that was included, but yeah. I also don't know why you couldn't like remap the touch screen to buttons. I mean, I know like, then the DS touch screen wouldn't really be that useful, but because why would you put it on the DS otherwise? But like, I would have liked to at least have the option to remap the buttons, the touch screen inputs to a button. And here you see I'm doing all the. So, yeah, this is a pretty good game. Also, story wise, it's pretty cool. Uh, here I'm playing with Darth Vader, uh, shooting his lightning and stuff. Um, but then there's also this segment where you play as this person that I can't recognize because it doesn't zoom out far enough. Uh, but it appears to be like a girl or something. And he's, they're finding like this giant monster, just that bundle of polygons, that giant, giant, giant monster. Um, and then I just keep, um, mashing that little spot on the touch screen where you just, like, fling your lightsaber, which is really, really cool. Um, yeah, just, just overall a really good, quite a good Star Wars game. Uh, just really thought the button mapping issue as well as, like, the really being, like, a lack of, like, extra content really kind of took a big chunk away from me.
start this game. Alright, so our next game that we're going to do is Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Mess. Ah, uh, well, these graphics are a definite improvement from The Force Unleashed, I'll tell you that. Well, uh, what can I say? It's just regular Star Wars action here. Slashing, hack slashing your way through enemies here. You do a spin move here and there. There's even a pl PS1 PlayStation version released, but I don't have that version, so uh, I'm using a clip from the Native Gamer on YouTube. I, I hope you're okay with that. Uh, no, no angry comments, please. Uh, well, I do have to say, though, those bullets that you fire back at those enemies that you see on screen right now, they are way, those bullets are way too, like, small. Uh, but other than that, no real problem. Uh, this game was actually pretty good. So the third game that we're going to be doing today is Star Wars Arcade. And uh, just a note, the 32X version that you see in the thumbnail, uh, turns out I didn't have a 32X emulator. But Cyber Station at the local mall was nice enough to add a Star Wars arcade machine into their arcade. So uh, let's check that out. Well, I am so glad I recorded lots and lots and lots of footage for this game because I don't really see that many people talking about it. Just like The Force Unleashed. I actually see less people talking about this version than The Force Unleashed. <laughs> um, well, um, this game is very, very fun to play. Star Wars games are usually really dynamic, but, like, you shoot people and chips. Uh, you shoot, you shoot, you shoot. Uh, so, yeah, like, it's actually pretty fun to play. And the controls are really good, too, I mean, though. You use the joystick to move your ship around. And then you use the little lever stick thingy to accelerate or brake. And then the little button down on top of it is the view change button. I think that was a really good control layout um, for this kind of game. Actually, I take back what I said at the beginning of the video. I don't really have much to say about this one. I mean, I suck at it. Uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much all I've got to say. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so the fourth game, the fourth and final game that we're going to be looking at today is Star Wars The Galaxy of Heroes. <coughs> <sighs> so this game is actually the second most fun to play. The Battle Pod was definite, which is an arcade game, was definitely the most fun to play. But this one has multiple stages you can play and even a easy or hard mode, or I guess normal or hard mode, but... Yeah, it really incentivizes you to go into the hard stages to get uh, the special character shards and crystals that you can get uh, in there. So as you can see, I am on uh, Genolysis 2F, whatever that is. And as you can totally see here, this is the best squad of any squad. Unless you have an ally in the sixth slot, but I don't have a sixth uh, light side character. Sorry. But I guess we're going in with this team. And as you can see here, even the shadows get to attack. Like, how does that even work? How that, would that even hit me? So, from the little squares in the corners, the first one is a normal move that you can do every turn, and one is a special move that you can do once a certain number of turns has gone by, which I guess, like, I don't know why, I mean, it, I guess it incentivizes you to, like, save the special moves for, if you're, 
because I don't think a noob is doing enough damage. I don't know. Also, why does Chewbacca have a move that uh, lets him like get hit all the time? I mean, like I can see uh, it, it would be like in case one of your characters is gonna die, like uh, the clones are generated. You can use Chewbacca to take hits instead for you, but. Yeah, that just doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> um. Yeah, as, as I told you, this one is the one I have the least amount of footage for. So bye! That was a pretty good game, actually. Bye!